way, way, way back, like nine years ago, you and I featured for the first time and what has now become the only time a Chevrolet Equinox on the show. Yes, a highly unremarkable vehicle, but that particular one was remarkable because of one thing, its propulsion system. You see, it was a fuel cell vehicle. And the episode wasn't just about the vehicle. I featured a gentleman who has now become a good friend, Alex Carroll. He's one of these annoying people that's like ridiculously smart. He collects degrees like other people collect stamps. And to make him further annoying, he has his father's 1971 C3, which really pisses me off. Anyway, I digress. Uh, he kind of righted the ship on fuel cell, at least the future of it. The, the marketing people at GM back at the time were saying, oh yeah, you give it five years, fuel cell, it's taken over the world. Well, fast forward nine years later, and this is now the second fuel cell vehicle we are featuring on the show. This one, a much prettier carrying case uh, by way of Hyundai. So let's, you and I, do a tech review and then in the next episode, let's do a full first drive review with some surprises here of a fuel cell vehicle that attracts insects. Admittedly, the world of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles has expanded just a wee bit in the nine years since you and I have driven the Chevrolet Equinox. There's the Honda, there's a the Toyota, and there was a Hyundai that was the Tucson built on the previous generation Tucson. That was the internal combustion engine platform that was kind of rebuilt for the fuel cell propulsion system. This is a purpose-built fuel cell vehicle. So there's a couple of things we need to understand going on underneath the hood. First and foremost, buried way underneath there is an electric motor, because at the end of the day, this is an electric vehicle. Uh, it's 161 horsepower and 291 pounds of torque. And then built on top of that is the fuel cell system, or at least part of it. In the center is the fuel cell stack. And that's really where all the business is done, where it transforms the hydrogen into electricity, which runs the actual electric motor. Then on either side of it, like over on that side, that's where the plumbing comes in from one of three hydrogen tanks in the back of the vehicle. And then effectively that stack, at least the marketing folks tell me, acts as like a purifier. So it makes the air cleaner, if you could believe that. But the big thing that happens on this side is the emissions that comes out of the fuel cell vehicle. And this is where we get a bit behind the scenes. If I were to move this right now, there would be a puddle of water underneath the car. Inside, there's a lot going on here, more than the standard serial production Hyundais you and I have been looking at over the past couple of years. And believe it or not, it has very little to do with the fact that this is a fuel cell vehicle, more to do with two specific things. Number one, a huge departure in interior design themes. And number two, I would say color and trim, but more fit and finish. Let's start with that first one. So this was designed in Hyundai's California studio, which is run by Chris Chapman, who you've met. Uh, here they went with a total like EV theme. And the concept, you can see it in two areas. Number one, this higher console, and number two, this complete departure in the instrument binnacle. Let's start with this. The switch gear is very familiar in Hyundai, Kia, all that kind of stuff. But what they've done is they've raised it, so you have the feeling that you're sitting in the vehicle as opposed to on the vehicle. If you've seen any of our Porsche episodes, you know what I'm talking about. And then while we're on the topic of Porsches, remember the older Panameras that had all the buttons on that wonderful console? That kind of harkens back to that, and I love the fact that Chris and the guys did this. Uh, I am not excited about the push-button transmission. Chris, I would love to see you go with like a regular shifter. That would be lovely. Uh, but then you look at some of the switch gear. Is there is a departure being this is a fuel cell vehicle. Like the knobs themselves, they're all done in a much like higher quality feel. Then there's this instrument pinnacle here. And the original sketches just showed what you say in the Santa Fe today, where it just pops up here, uh, and then this was separate. But I'm guessing, if I'm really reading the tea leaves, they looked at what some of the competition is doing in this higher-end EV segment, and they said, we need to kind of follow on with that. So this design was sent over to Korea, and Korea sent it back looking like this, which I have to say I do like quite a bit. Then there's the color and trim and that fit and finish. 
Uh, I, as you've seen, been a fan of Hyundai and Kia over the past couple of years. But here, there's something going on. Like, you look at this, like, air ribbon, they call it. Uh, the vents are kind of hidden in this, and then the design is repeated into the door panels. But it's this satin finish that's repeated here on the knobs, door panels, as well as the handles. But then that attention to detail, it, like, permeates throughout the whole vehicle to the point where... I'm thinking when they sat down and they came up with the planning meeting for this vehicle, they're like, look, let's just admit to ourselves this is a science experiment. So let's make it stand out a bit more than some of our other vehicles. And you can absolutely tell with every bit of the build quality. So driving dynamics. Here I'm not going to mince words because there is a whole lot of shit going on way beyond the usual name, rank, and serial number of McPherson struts and 12.6 inch diameter rotors in the front and 11.6 inch diameter rotors in the back. Here it starts with the multi-link unit in the back. Now I know we've discussed this a lot with Hyundais and Kias, but in all those other applications it has everything to do with performance. Here it has everything to do with packaging because there's a lot of bits that are here you don't see. Uh, so the multi-link unit makes room for not one, but three hydrogen tanks. So it makes up a total of 156.6 liters of hydrogen, which translates to 41.4 gallons of hydrogen, but that's broken up over three tanks that are 13.8 gallons each. Then on top of the hydrogen packaging, there is the battery. So that battery is 1.6 kilowatt hours of energy. So not a really huge battery. And then on top of all that, there's the size of the vehicle. So you look at this in pictures or see it in video, it doesn't look that big. But in comparison to say the Kona that we drove back in what March in Hawaii, this is a 109.8 inch wheelbase. That's seven inches longer than the Kona and 184.8 in total length. That's 20 inches longer than the Kona. Now, how does it impact the weight? Well, this is the fancy one, so it's got more stuff on it. If it were the basic one, it would be 3,990 pounds. This one with the sunroof and everything is 4,116 pounds. Well, in his haste to go take Kumo for a walk, Moto Man left me in a lurch. He left me to finish up this video on the 2019 Hyundai Nexo, and he also forgot a number of important facts about this product. We've got to talk about range and cargo capacity. So with a full tank of hydrogen on board, this thing is going to give you up to 380 miles of driving range, although the fancy version, which is what we've been testing here, well, it's a little bit less, about 354 miles. In comparison, a Honda Clarity is going to do about 366. Coefficient of drag, if you're curious, and, well, I know you are, it's about 0.32 when you've got the optional 19-inch wheels. But let's talk about cargo capacity. Behind the third row seat, expect about 30 cubic feet, but if you fold those down, the number nearly doubles, making this far and away more versatile than the Clarity, which of course is just a sedan. But I'm gonna leave you with this, a, a parting query, if you will, because Moto Man and I both find this to be probably the most attractive hydrogen fuel cell vehicle that's available on the market today. We think it's certainly prettier than anything you're going to get at your Honda or Toyota store that has a similar powertrain. But what do you think, dear viewer? Make sure you leave a comment down below and follow us on social media. Of course, it's Moto Man TV on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and probably even YouTube. So make sure you do that. Once again, I am Craig Cole with autoguide.com. Thank you so very much for watching and make sure you check back again a little bit later when we're gonna have a full first drive review of the 2019 Hyundai Nexo.